we will now begin with the next chapter that is sketching and part modeling in design modeler let us first understand what is design modeler and why is it necessary for any analysis that we perform requires a part model uh, we have discussed the same thing in the general procedure of fpa that before starting of any analysis analysis you need the part model so this part part model which is required for our analysis can either be created in ansys workbench or it can be imported from any other cad package the part models that uh, can be created in the design modeler and these parts that are created in design modeler are parametric and feature based whatever models we create in design modeler are a combination of sketched and placed features the sketched features are, are those which require a sketch to be drawn first and then the feature will be added and the placed features are those which do not require any sketches the design modeler window can be accessed from the geometry cell the geometry cell can be a stand alone system or it can be associated with any other analysis system now you can see two images over here that the geometry can be a stand alone system or it can be associated with any other analysis system so first let us understand how to add this system if you want to add a geometry cell as a stand alone system in component system you have this geometry cell over here you can add this separately so it becomes a stand alone geometry system or else you can add any analysis system in which you will get the geometry cell okay to enter into the geometry cell you can either right click on it and say new geometry or else you can double click on it once you double click on the geometry cell you will enter into the design modeler window now the design modeler window is the same thing that you are going to use for creating your models in ansys workbench now the first thing that it will ask you to do is as soon as you enter the design modeler is set the unit system now if you look at this very carefully you have some options over here where the length can be decided the length has to be whether you want the length to be into meters centimeters millimeters micrometers foot or into inches and just below that you have some other options for example always use project unit now what does this this mean is if i select this option always use project unit all these options become hidden and the unit system will be the same as you have set in the project window let me show you this in you in the project schematic window the unit system is set to si unit system where the length is into meters so that means if i select this option over here as use project unit the unit will be set to meters okay if i select the project unit as foot and inches if i use us customary or as us engineering where the unit system is set into inches can you see the now the unit system has set into inches okay so that is always use the project unit now if i select this option next time whenever i open the geometry this dialog box where you have to select the unit system will not appear please make a note of it if i select this option next time whenever i open the geometry cell this dialog box will not open and the unit system will automatically be set to whatever unit system you have set in the project window if i say always use selected unit that means if i make the unit system if i say that i want to use millimeter for the current geometry cell and if i say always use selected unit that means next time whenever i open a geometry cell the unit system will automatically be set to millimeters again it will not ask me to change the unit system have you understood please understand if i select always use use selected unit that means whatever i have set now the same will be carried forward for all the other geometry cells 
Now there is one more option. Now currently because the unit system is set on millimeters, there is one option enable large model support which is hidden now. Enable large model support is only will be accessible only when you set the unit system as meter or as foot. Because these two unit systems are large, only then it will be available. So you can create large models and it will support your large models when you use meters or foots. It will, it, cannot, it will become grayed as soon as you set to something as a smaller unit system like centimeters, millimeters or inches. Okay. So you will set your unit system first, okay, and then you will enter into the design modeler. Now first let us understand about the design modeler graphical user interface. You will have the title bar, you have the main menu bar, then you have certain toolbars over here which will be used as per their need. Then we have a tree outline where all your uh, features, datum, planes will be uh, listed over here. Uh, as soon as you start creating your models, the features will be listed one by one over here. Then you have a sketching tab and modeling tab. If I click on sketching tab, you will enter into the sketching mode. If I click on modeling tab, you will come back to this window where you can use your uh, feature tools. Then you have a details view uh, which shows you the information of the object, uh, the features that you select. Then you have your graphics area. This over here is called as the ruler. Can you see this? This is called as your ruler which shows you the, you the unit system that you are using and also shows you the tentative length of your uh, model. We will see how to use the ruler when we start creating the model. Then we have your model view and the print view. Print view shows the print view of your analysis. Then this over here is called as a view triad. View triad is nothing but as you rotate your model, it shows you the views, the x, y, z axis. And then you can see a blue colored sphere over here, which is called as the ISO ball. As soon as I click on the ISO ball, it will set the uh, view as the isometric view. And then we have a status bar over here. So this is the graphical user interface of design modeler. Now once you come into the design modeler, you can see the three default planes that is the XY plane, YZ plane and the ZX plane which you can use for creating the geometry. So now let us see how to create a sketch and how to create the model. So we will be seeing how to create the sketches and we will see how to add the base features like extrude and revolve. So let us start. So for creating the sketch, the first thing that you need to do is you need to select your base plane. On which plane do you not need to start creating your sketch? I'll select the XY plane and then we will click on the sketching tab. As soon as you click on the sketching tab, now your view changes and you can see some different tabs over here. You have the draw tab, modify tab, dimensions, constraints and settings. In the draw tab, you have all the tools that are required for sketching the sketch. That means you have all your sketching tools. In modify tab, you have all the modification options like how to trim the uh, sketch, adding fillets, adding chamfers, cutting, co cut, copy, paste, all those. Then we have the dimensions tab by using which you can add dimensions to your sketches. Then we have the constraints tab where all the constraints are available, geometric constraints which you can add to your sketches. And then you have the settings tab where you have settings like whether you want to see the grid. See. I want to see the gridding. I want the snaps to be on so that the mouse snaps to the grids only. I want major grid spacing as 10. What should be the grid spacing and what should be the snaps uh, value you can enter those values over here okay and then you have an option over here which is look at face as soon as i click on this my sketching plane becomes normal to my screen so you can use this to reorient your sketching plane and now we will start sketching the sketch so in draw tab we have options like line tangential line line by two tangents polyline 
polygon rectangle rectangle by three points you have oval circle circle by three tangents arc by th tangent arc by three points arc by center ellipse and you have the spline option and you also have the construction point and construction point at intersection so these are all the sketching tools that you can use so as per your requirement you can use all these sketching tools and create your sketch so let us start creating the sketch if you want to use a line you have the line option and you have the polyline option now suppose if you need to line more than one time you can directly start using the polyline once you select the line over here if you see when I come to this construction line, I get a symbol over here which is C. That means your line will be coincident on this construction line. If you see a symbol P, that means the point is coincident on a center point. It is coincident on a point. I use a polyline and I can start creating my sketch. Now if you see we are getting a symbol V, that means the line is going to be vertical. If you need to stop over here or you still need to continue, you can still continue. And now here I need to end the command. So I need to end the polyline. So what you need to do is don't click on the, uh, the last point. Just right click and say whether it has to be an open ended polyline or closed ended. In this case, I need a closed ended polyline. So I will say closed ended so that it automatically meets the first point that you have drawn. Now. If you see closely over here, this line over here is not horizontal, but I need this line to be horizontal. So I can go to constraints and I can say horizontal. So that line becomes horizontal. Now I need to add dimensions to my sketch. So I will click on the dimensions tab and now you can start adding your dimensions. So if you want to add, if you just be on the general option, you can just select the line and automatically the dimension appears. Now if you see, you are getting the dimension but you are not getting the value you are getting just the name of that dimension that is v1 and in the details view you will get the value also so the value is 8.5 or something so i need to make it as 20 units i'll make it as 20. similarly i need to add other dimensions also this dimension over here has to be one unit this also has to be one unit. This has to be 20. Now I need to add the dimension from this point to this point over here. Now for this I cannot use the... Okay. Can you see I have used the horizontal distance and I have measured it. This has to be 26. Similarly, the distance from here to here also has to be 26. And finally, I want to measure this length, which has to be 240. So I have created my sketch. Now I want to add some constraints to it. I want this to be symmetrical. So I'll go to constraints. I'm selecting the symmetry option. The symmetry has to be added to this. So I am select first thing you need to select your construction line and then you have to select the points. So I can select this point, use control and select the other. Okay. And now I will add one angle dimension to this line and to this. So now if you see the entire sketch becomes blue in color that means this sketch now is a fully constrained sketch before giving the angle okay if i just click on undo that means the angle goes can you see this line is still green in color that means it is not fully constrained now once the angle is added again it again becomes fully constrained so this is my sketch that i needed now I need to add the base feature to it. So I click on modeling tab so that I come back to the modeling tab. 